Hi guys, welcome back. In the third video of my small series about the Zeiss Icon, Contaflex Pro Tesser from Carl Zeiss on the Sony E-Mount, I would like to introduce you to the lens with the longest focal length. Pro Tesser 4.0 115mm. This 115mm telephoto lens was developed and introduced as the last and longest focal length. Everything about the adapter and the lens system can be found in my first video of this series. The second video is about the Pro Tesser 4.0 35mm. Today I would like to give you my opinion about the mechanical and optical quality. Thank you for your time and interest in this video. If you like the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Each of the Pro Tessers I build is made of metal and glass only. There is no built-in helicoid or aperture. These are located in the focusable rear lens group of the Contaflex cameras built for analog photography, or in the adapter used here. Because of this design, the lenses are extremely rugged and seem to be built to last. I love the look and feel of these lenses. Just fantastic. The 4.0 115mm presented here, which came onto the market in 1961, has approximately the following data. It consists of 9 elements. Weighs 450 grams. Is 6.9 cm long and has a maximum diameter of 7 cm. Screw and filters of size 67 mm can be used. The original filter shown here weighs approximately 43 grams. Due to the construction as a set lens, the filter thread does not rotate when focusing. The closest focusing distance when used on the analog Contaflex models is 0.7 meters, with the helicoid adapter used here only slightly closer. After I was completely convinced by the mechanical quality, I was curious about the optical performance. First I'll show you unprocessed RAW files. These were taken with the Sony A7R4, a stress test for every lens, because it has to show its performance at 61 megapixels of resolution. As you can see here, the vignetting is very pronounced and still slightly visible at f11. However, this can be easily removed when editing the raw file. And with some subjects it is not important anyway. The problem of vignetting can largely be explained by the fixed rear lens group. Longitudinal chromatic aberration is excellently corrected, as you can see here with the aperture wide open. Somehow I can hardly believe it, but I could see no or only very little longitudinal chromatic aberration in other test images. Fantastic! This aberration, if present, can be reduced by stopping down. I could hardly see lateral chromatic aberration, another type of chromatic aberration. With this aberration, color fringing occurs at the edges of the image because the lens magnifies different color components of an image differently. Lateral chromatic aberration cannot be reduced by stopping down. However, lateral chromatic aberration can be corrected with a single click in Lightroom. However, in some shooting situations, the image appears flat at f4 due to spherical aberration, as in this example at the closest focusing distance. Defined sun stars are not possible with this lens. The bokeh, however, is fantastic. With the aperture wide open, the background is blurred. Also, with the aperture open at the typical portrait distance, there is incredible sharpness in the center of the frame. Just great. A dream for portrait photographers who love a vintage look for their images. I am thrilled.
I recommend stopping down to F8 to F11 for long distances or when you need the most even sharpness from corner to corner. The close-up imaging performance is shown here in a small series. As always, I will show you processed RAW files at the end of the video. All shots were taken with the Sony A7R4. What is my conclusion? This lens gets a definite buy recommendation from me. Its bokeh makes it a wonderful lens for portraits. Stop down, it is also good for general photography, but please note that the outer edges of the image are the weakest area. Thank you for your interest and time, until the next video, stay healthy.